But, yeah, I kind of hear what you're trying to say. You're trying to say if the man comes to court as a husband, he tries to play his free man stuff, and the judge gives everything to the wife. Because the defendant hasn't shown up in court. What if he says to the judge... Now I'm the person, now I'm the defendant? Yep. Then the trial commenced. And what about, he said, now I'm back to the man. Then the judge can't see anymore. He can't, he can't, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's totally back to a blank screen again. The okay. judge isn't stupid enough to try to judge okay. this fellow. No judge, no judge, no judge, no judge, no judge has ever put a man in jail. No judge has ever put a man in jail. They put defendants in jail. They put people in contempt of court in jail. They put people convicted, people who were convicted into jail. No judge has ever put a man into jail. He's only put the fence. The judge can't just walk down through the street, the town street, and says, hey, man, get over here. What? You're going to jail. What? I'm the judge, and you're going to jail. What? I don't like what I just seen you do. You know, you're going to jail. The judge just can't walk down the street and just say, I don't like what you did. You're, you know, I'm going to hold you in contempt. I'm the judge. Look at all the stripes I'm on. Look at how big my wig is. You're a man, and you're going to jail. The judge could only put defendants, legal persons, in jail. The judge can't put a man in jail. And if you don't know how to separate yourself from being a legal person and being a man, oh, well. But then, like I said, if you're going into a legal proceeding where you were stupid enough to have a wife with a marriage contract through the state and bank accounts and mortgages through state and financial institutions that are governed by the government, governed or controlled by the state, then the state is going to tell, the, the government's going to tell the state institutions or the LCCs or the banks to take the account and give it to the other legal person, because that other legal person isn't there. So if you want to play a legal person, the, the only legal person could like open up a bank account. A legal person could get a mortgage. Only a legal person could have like a cell phone. Only a legal person, you know, to have a car. Man has property. Legal persons have all that other crap. So when you have a car and you have a child and you have a house and you got a bank account, that's all legal. And they got control of all that legal crap. They ain't got control of property. So when, if you don't know the difference between a judge saying, well, she's going to have the car, she's going to have the house, yeah, she's, going to, she's, going have, she's going to have the children, she's going to have all the shit. It's like, that's right, she can have all that shit. The only thing you better not be making a ruling on, judge, was whether or not you're, you know, giving somebody else my property. And I'm talking about my property now, judge. Are you talking about something called a child, something called a car, something called a house, something called a bank? You're not, you're not talking about the property, right? You're not making a ruling on my property, are you? See, that's what I'm saying, because you don't know the difference. One is legal, one is legal, and one is lawful. Yeah, got that. Could he have won or turned the court into a common law court? I kind of heard the question. Could he have done what? Could he have turned that statute, that proceeding, no. into a common law? No. No. no, absolutely not. He'd be in contempt, and he should be locked up and have a psychological evaluation commenced immediately. Yeah, he needs to make his own claim for it to be his court. Yeah, he better, right. Well, what country are you from? I mean, where are you, where are you calling me from? Australia. Okay. And what was your name? I'm Rodrigo Aguirre. Yeah, that's an Aboriginal name. <laughs> I'm Chilean. Yeah. <laughs> South American. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a very anyway, Aboriginal name. We've had this conversation before, so... Anyway. Well, yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's, that's the translation of your Aboriginal click-clack ping-pong name, there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Like Carl, Carl Lentz is a better name. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anyway. You know, that, that, that's right. Their, their first, what are they, their first nation is or first settlers? What are they called? They don't like to be called Aboriginals. They like to be called uh, first first people or first nations or... I don't know. They're changing all the time. It's just stupid anyway. Yeah, yeah, but what's funny is, yeah, but they could drive without insurance and they could drive without licenses and they could drive without registration. But not many pe not many of them know that, so they're stupid to actually go and get registrations and driver's license. So, yeah, but a lot of them do, man. A lot of them know that they could just, you know, they just put a, uh, they paint a symbol on the side of their, you know, back quarter panel on their car, and uh, the cops leave them alone because, you know, it's a symbol of their, that they're the first, you know, first people, the first nation. Yeah, this is what you were bringing up last time we had a chat, and I really didn't understand it because you got some other guy on the call, and, right, okay. Yep. They said it's the same damn thing. You find the first Thanks. first people, the first First Nations people everywhere. Canada, United States, Mexico, uh, Australia. Uh, you find the First Nations people, and uh, you, this is all they do. Is they let the government aware that, you know, when you see, uh, you know, a feather hanging off our windshield, man, that means, uh, you know, we're First Nations people, and let us be.
So, you know, and they got a life. That's why I had that show with my sister on two uh, Saturdays ago. I said, you people don't believe me? Oh, good. You know what? She's teaching all the Navajos down there. She's in Gallup, New Mexico right now as we speak. I said, let me put my sister on the phone, and she could tell you the wonderful world of driving without policemen and without blue lights in your rear view window and without worrying about laws and traffic laws. And she got on. And she explained that the even streets are the white man streets and the odd streets are the Indian streets. So if you want to get drinking and driving, all you have to do is go home on the odd numbered streets. And if you uh, don't, if you're in a hurry and you don't want to stop the stoplights or stop signs, drive on the Indian streets because you can do 100 miles an hour and you're not going to get stopped. She said, but what's funny at those intersections, you see tons of like crucifixes everywhere, you know, because yeah. people are dying all over the place. So if people want to live in a free man society like the Navajo Indians, you know, they don't have to have driver's licenses. They don't have to have anything. They could actually get away with going 100 miles an hour through their side, their part of town, and it's not a damn thing the cops are going to do about it. And my sister said on my show, thank God, my sister said on my show, it's not me saying it because I've lived with Indians and I know they're crazy. And uh, so she used to always stick up for the Indians and always say that, oh, I'm making this stuff up. I said, oh, yeah, really? So she said the other day, some Indian boy got caught shoplifting at a, like a five and dime store, a discount store, a, uh, a dollar general store. And, uh, he got brought to his chief elders in his nation by the police, the local police. Well, he was so embarrassed that he was arrested and brought to the chief elders that he made a Molotov cocktail, uh, or fire, a gas bomb. Uh, in a bottle, and he was standing on the Indian side of the street, and he threw it at the Dollar General store and burnt the Dollar General store down to the ground. And the police and the fire department got there, and the kid was just laughing and dancing his ass off because he was on the other side of the street where the cops couldn't come across and arrest him. So I said to people, if you want to live in a land where you can't be arrested, where you could just do whatever you want, well, go spend some time with my sister down in Gallup, New Mexico, and go hang out with these Indians. 95% of the people she teaches are Indians. And you'll see the uh, how crazy it is to actually live with Indians when you don't have to worry about police. You don't have to worry about law. You don't have to worry about getting arrested. Hey, you want to burn a building down to the ground? Mm, that's fine. You just really pissed off that day? Mm, just burn a building down to the ground. And I said, honestly, uh, the Dollar General store probably didn't really mind that they were burned down to the ground because, you know, in a white man's world, we have something called insurance. So the Dollar General store obviously probably liked, the, the employees probably liked the store being burnt down because now they probably got all new air conditioning, put in new heating systems in. They got rid of all the old inventory. They got room for new inventory now so that, you know, the insurance companies indemnify it, you know, even though the insurance kid obviously is never going to have to pay a dime for burning that building down to the ground. It's not a damn thing they could do to them, which is pretty funny. Overall, you know, everything probably worked out okay, you know. But like I said, if you saw some Indian kid winding up to throw a firebomb at your house, you probably would shoot him dead. You'd say, kid, you better drop that thing. You better drop that gas bomb. You better not let that thing fly. And in a white man's world, it's like, go ahead, burn my house down the ground. I'm okay. I got a million-dollar insurance policy on that baby. Go ahead. Light it up, kid. Now, what's your stance on driver's license? Huh? What's your stance on driver's license, sir? What do they do with driver's licenses? What is your stance on that? I, I kind of understand the driver's license question. What What is your stance? Do you believe that we all should have a driver's license, even when it's meant to be for commercial use? Well, like I said, the big thing is if you don't have driver's licenses, it's like I said, you know, these free men movements are the kind of people like a go to Keene, New Hampshire, like a porcupine experiment, whatever they call it up there. And uh, these people are actually going into towns that have been around for three, 400 years, and they're trying to, Say well, we don't need licenses. We could drive drunk. We could drink, we could smoke pot. We could walk around naked. And I'm like, hey, hey, hey. You know, if you want to make your own community, there's about 20 miles north. There's tons of forest and trees. Make your own damn city. Make your own damn town. Make your own damn laws. But leave these people alone. They've been there for 400 years. If they want driver's licenses, if they want license plates, let them be. You didn't have to come from all over the world to occupy Keene, New Hampshire. Go, go make your own damn town. Go find a ghost town out in the middle of nowhere in Utah, Nevada, Texas. Go find a ghost town, you know, that people built and all the gold is gone, all the silver is gone. Go occupy those towns. How can you go build your own little town when the government claims every bit of land? No, that's ridiculous because all you, well, that's because you don't know how to say that that's public land. 
and they're just holding it, waiting for somebody in the public to come and make a claim. No, in, in this country, no, we can do that. We can make a claim for public land, that we're going to occupy the public land, and that we're going to uh, work the land, and that we're going to either like mine or cultivate on it. We're going to make farmland out of it. No, the government allows you to do uh, homesteading here in this in, in this country. After right. seven years, yeah, in this in this country, yeah, after seven years, as long as you occupy it and work it for the seven years, yeah, then then they'll turn the title over to you. But you got right. you, have to, you have to work the land. I heard of one guy, but he didn't know anything about law. There was a homeless man that lived on some forest, whatever, for 25 years, and he proved it in court, in a statute court, statutory court, and they gave it to him. Instant millionaire. Multi-multi-millionaire. But that was statute, statute law and statute. 25 yeah, well, years. Well, he, he, lived on, he lived on some piece of land for 25 years. and Yeah, homeless, under like trees and right. the works. And, yeah, but like I said, it's the law. It's, it's a law that's been around forever, you know, and especially in this country, because they want people to occupy desolate areas, and that's how, you know, towns grew and expanded, you know. It was called homesteading, you know. It's just, just like in Florida. So what's the, so what's the common law rule? Florida has homesteading acts like that. No, there's a lot what's of states that have, like, home, so there's, like, a homesteading act in Florida. You Like, if you have a house, if you went down to Florida and you built a house, it's, that's why it's very hard to... Uh, foreclose on somebody like in Florida is because that you uh, uh, came down there and you helped develop a wilderness. You helped develop a place that wasn't occupied by anybody. So they create laws to help you, like when you can't pay you know, the mortgage, you can't pay the loan on all that land or all that buildings that you put on there. They try to help you. It's like, well, you know what? If you get into hard times, you know what? We'll create laws down here that you only have to pay back pennies on a dollar because, you know what? We're just grateful that somebody came down to this swamp called Florida and uh, helped develop the land. Very interesting. Yeah, well, that's what the government, most governments want you people to go occupy swamp land and go occupy deserts and go occupy forests. And, well, it know. makes sense. It does. That's good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, you know, because like a national forest or something like that, you know, has no roads in it, you know, so you're going to have to build a road and then other people are going to come in and then people are going to be tourists and you know, until then, it's just, you know, like you go to Germany, you look at a German forest, it looks like a looks like a golf course. It's all manicured and pretty. You go to United States forests, you know, they got all kinds of scrub brush everywhere. You got pine tree. You got all kinds of crap, you know, because it's just wilderness. You know, I mean, it's not like a forest in Germany that's been around for two, three thousand years. And that stuff looks like, you know, looks like a golf course. It's so... All right, wait, how, how do you claim it? Like, because I know somebody up in Queensland, I'm in Victoria, Australia, I don't know if you know the states here, but I'm down south in Victoria, and I know somebody up north in Queensland that wants to do this. How do we go about doing it? Do you just move on the land, or do you have to make a claim in the court? Do you have to notify well, like said, the government? Usually, usually the easiest way to do it in this country is you go for mineral rights. Did you say you, you were walking through, you know, this part of the you know, forest and you saw tin or silver or copper or aluminum or something and you go get it tested and they say, yep, that's iron ore, yep, that's, uh, you know, aluminum or that's, uh, yep, that's zinc. You say, okay, and I'm going to mine it, you know, and they say, okay, you know, as long as you put up some sort of a construction site and it's like you're working the land, you know, you got to be on the land for like seven years. I don't know how often they actually send like somebody from the park service or the forest service out there to see if you're actually on that land for seven years, but who actually wants to just be sitting on some piece of dirt in the middle of nowhere well, for seven years? Well, I mean, can you live there, not just sit there or mine it? Can you actually go and live there and form your own community? Or well, you have to go a, right, you have to be working. it. You actually have to, like, put a house up, like a log cabin or something. You actually have to be, you know, God bless that guy who actually wants to, you know, Davey, who wants to really be that frontiersman kind of guy, because when people come here, and where I live is kind of rough. Like, I had no running water for months, and I had no electricity, you know, for two or three months. And people come here, and they're like, holy cow, this is a rough way to live. I said, rough? I said, three, I go three miles down the street, and I got a grocery store. I go five miles, and I got, you know, what are you talking about, rough? I said, you live out in the woods. You wait until you try to find a grocery store, or you find a, a place to go get some hammer and nails, you know, and then tell me about being rough. I said, man, I got it easy here. Just because I don't have water or electricity, mm -hmm. I don't got it rough compared to if I was homesteading it. Well, like my great right. grandfather. What, what if you didn't want to make a claim for the minerals and you didn't, well, well let me tell you, you don't have the money to set up the foundation to build a construction site. 
how do you go about making a claim that you want to go and just live there and build your own community? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what, uh, like I said, it's just, like I said, it's a home, like the home, it's just, if you just study up homesteading, you know, just say, you know, how your country was, I'm sure your country was, your, your nation was developed in the same exact way through homesteading. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I'm sure, I'm sure it was done the same exact way. You know, they opened up, you know, the wilderness of the frontier and said, you know what? You stake out 40 acres, you know, and it's yours. You just got to work the land for seven years. As long as you work it for seven years, then you could sell it, trade it, or, uh, you know, or keep it. I'm sure there's all kinds of setting acts. Uh, and what's funny with people, when people see these acts, you know, and, and the biggest thing is if they've never been repealed. You just say, huh, you know what? This act has never been repealed. So you know what? It's law, it was law then. It's law now. Since it hasn't been outlawed, it's still in law. Huh. Wait, wait, wait. You're talking about an act. Are you talking about acting as a person or what? No, no, no. Like the, no, like the nation. You know, the people who yeah. have the guns, the, the government, the people who have the guns created these acts, yeah. like homestead, homesteading acts. And as long as the homesteading act wasn't repealed, like say in 1991, somebody realized, holy crap, we still got this homesteading act on the books. Wow, people could still go claim a million acres of land, you know, and uh, holy cow, we better put a hold to that, you know. So if you could find like a homesteading act that's still in effect, it's like, hey, it's never been outlawed. Nobody says we and can't a man, do and it a, anymore. And a man can use that homesteading act, right? And that's what I'm saying. And then he could go occupy that land, and still, and even if he didn't have a homesteading act, he could still go occupy the land, and they could say. Is this a public land? Is this a public forest? Yes, but I'm going to claim, as a member of the public, I'm going to claim this section of the forest or this section of the land, and I'm going to use it. If anybody has an objection or anybody has another claim to wanting to use this land, let me know, and we'll work out some sort of compromise or a deal. But until somebody comes forward, you know what? I'm going to go use this public land because I'm the public, and my public servants you know, are there to make sure that I have access to that land. That's what they're here for. It's a public land. Mm. To see, that's the yeah. whole mindset, right? That's the whole mindset. Is that that's the public land, and that's what people wanted to grow pot in uh, marijuana, or whatever, in Canada. So I said, "Why are you doing it on your property? Why did you, you know, you know, like I said, that's kind of uh, crazy because you know, you his, this guy's wife got arrested, his son got shackled, his wife got shackled." I said, "Look, instead of putting your family at risk." Why don't you just go get some public land and go grow it on some public land? Then if they touch your property, you've got a, a claim against whoever the man touches your property and steals your property. Right. Well, like I said, you tell the public officials, look, I'm going to be using public land to cultivate hemp or whatever you want to call it. And if anybody's got a problem with me cultivating hemp on this public land, especially another man, you know, another member of the public, let me know. You know, I'll, I'll take it under advisement, you know, if a public official tells me I shouldn't do it, but a public official can't tell a member of the public what he can and cannot do. And you build roads on your on that public land that you claimed. When you claim that public land, does that become, pri does that become property of your, your own? Well, it's, like I said, people always have this argument all the time, you know, do anybody have the right to own any land, you know, honestly, you know, because somebody like... Uh, Trying to think of the two people that I could think of really famous in this country. One is um, Ted Turner, who ran CNN, and the other guy is um, Hank Williams Jr. They basically own millions and millions of land, acres of land up in Lake Montana in North Dakota. They basically like, own the state because the land was so cheap that they were buying, you know, thousands of acres for pennies. So they they are like the biggest like landowners here in this country. But like I said, when you hear that this like two people, it's, you know, two men that own millions of acres, that kind of sounds funny, you know, but nobody's living up there, but it still sounds kind of funny. Like, do they really own that land? Like, if you wanted to go from point A to point B, do you really have to drive 500 miles or 1,000 miles around this guy's fence? I mean, if this guy's land goes 1,000 miles this way and 500 miles this way, and you got to go straight across the middle, do I really got to go all the way around this guy's fence, or can I just say, hey, you know what? I'm going through this guy's fence. I'm taking it down well, do my way. Um, huh? Do you need permission, or can you go through it without permission? That's right. That's the big. That's always the big argument since time began. You know, if you, not, you take the fence down, you know, and you put it back up, and you can't continue with your travels, and then you get to the other side, you take this fence down, and you put it back up. Did you do any harm? Did you do any damage? Just because you trespassed on this man's land. He's got millions of acres, you know, it's a thousand kilometers this way and 500 kilometers this way. 
you know, what am I supposed to do? Drive all the way around? Well, I'm just going to drive straight through. It's like, hey, you trespassed. Okay, well, where's the damage? Did I damage you, the land? Did I damage your crops? Did, no. Did I damage any animals? No. Well, you just weren't supposed to go here. Didn't you see the sign that said, for the next 1,000 miles, this is my land? It's like, honestly, I really didn't give a shit that was your land. Honestly, I just wanted to go from point A to point B, and your land just happened to be my way. Yeah, very interesting. I'll be researching this a lot more. I haven't really touched on it that much at all. Yeah, so like I said, it's 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 it's, it's always a it's always a very uh, interesting topic when people start talking like that, and that's why basically people left Europe. People left Europe mm-hmm. because there was only a couple of dukes, and earls, and knights, and you know they were controlling all the land, and the people basically had nowhere to go. It's like, where do we go? You know, the dukes and earls and everybody they own all the land. We got to be stuck in these little stupid cities. I guess it would just come, it would come down to a common law court whether some man has done you harm, injury, or loss to your property, being at your land. Oh, well, well the that, land. That's, that's why, that's why, like I said, that's why so many people left Europe because the farmers, if they got into a hard time, they had to sell their land and then they had to move into the cities. And then only the really extremely rich people had all this beautiful farmland. And if you wanted to work the farmland, it cost you a lot of money to work for the baron or the, the count or the county guy. So what happened is that's why they realized in the Commonwealth nations like the United States, Canada, Australia, and England, banks can't own land because banks will always have the money to loan to a man. But man is so stupid, he'll sell his land for a, for a fancy car. Or he'll sell his land for a diamond ring, for some bimbo. So yeah. man is stupid. Man will actually sell his land, beautiful land, you know, that his grandfather developed and worked and killed and died for. Man will sell his land like his grandchildren will, like you know, inherit the land, and he'll they'll sell it for a fancy car. And the banks will be more than glad to take it. But then, if the banks can own land, believe me, this country, the United States, would have been owned by banks a couple hundred years ago, because yeah. people are so stupid. You know, like if if you had an eighteen year old kid who just got a thousand acre farm, he's going to sell it for a fancy car. Well, grandpa yeah. died. Yeah, fuck farms. I want to go to have a fancy car, and he's going to sell it to the bank. Where people have mortgages, they have the title that the bank could hold the title, and then they have a deed, and man holds the deed. You'll never see a deed written out to a bank. The deed is always written out to a flesh and blood man. There's always two documents there. You know, you always got the deed, and you always got a title. You know, the bank can have a title. Whoop you do. A title can be taken from you. A title is given to you. But you know, the yeah. deed, the, you know, the land can't be taken from man. It can't be done. Yeah, right. I actually work in real estate, so that makes a lot of sense. Well, it's funny if you work in real estate, and I'm the first bloke to tell you that. That's pretty amazing. But well, that's yeah, how it we, is. We that's have a law, couple okay. more people with their hand up. Do you want to take any more questions? Uh, I've got, sorry, I've got one more quick question. What about another country? Can another country like China buy Australian land, you know, off the government or off the, you know, no, I guess it's off the government? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's why when Dean Clifford was saying, burn your birth certificates, I was like, that's the only form of proof that you came from that land is your birth certificate. Like, I'm from the United States. I would hope that Canada would be stupid enough to sell me land because I'm not a Canadian. You know, and like I said, when I, when people, when I say to people, it's like, look, you're, a, you know, man and land are the same word. And if people don't believe me that you come from the land. It's like, well, when you fall down and die, you're going to go back into the land in about 20 minutes or 20 yeah, years. Yeah, no, we get that. We get that. Right. We get that. So right. So like I, I said, the, what the Chinese asked me, right, I had a phone call a couple of years ago, and some Chinese guys wanted to put up a wind farm, and I was doing some wind farm uh, training from the federal government, put me, gave me some free money to go learn how to do wind farming. So they gave it, it was available to everybody, basically, in the United States who wanted to learn how to do a wind farm who had a farm or ranch land and was doing wind turbines. So some Chinese guys actually asked me, how, you know, how do we take the United States government to court? Because they let uh, British companies come in on the West Coast uh, in Seattle, like Puget Sound, and they let the Dutch come in and put up wind farms, but they won't let us come in and put up wind farms. I said, that's simple. I said, just sell your company to an American like me for a dollar, and then I'll get all the leases for you, and I'll get all the permits for you, and uh, it'll, the name of the uh, company will be, and the owner will be me. And I said, and then uh, obviously, you know, it's going to be a corporation, so you're going to be the majority shareholders, you know, but the the owner has to be an American. The owner has to be a man from the United States. 
He said, but they didn't make the, the English do it, and they didn't make the Dutch do it. And I said, yeah, because the Dutch and English are white. I'm not going to let a Chinese right. party. Right, so let me get this straight. I could actually go and walk on the land <laughs> that the Chinese bought in Australia because they've bought a lot of land here. You think they bought a lot of land there. You better find out who actually owns it. Yes, yeah, so it would be like you know, a, a country you or something. Out. That you better find out. No, no, just because you see a lot of the Chinese buying it, you better find out is it a corporation that leased the land or you better find out if it's a man who actually owns it. See, because I could go down to Mexico. I could go down to Mexico. I can't buy land, but I could lease it for 99 years. But I can never And you're going to be paying rent for 99 basically, years. It's basically paying rent, right. I could go down there and buy a million acres. Well, I can't buy it. I'm leasing a million acres. And they could, I could say it's the Carl Lentz Ranch in Mexico. And uh, everybody will believe I own the land. But the government people really know, since I'm not Mexican, all I'm technically doing is leasing it for 99 years, which basically uh, means... Okay, right. Yeah, no, it sank, it sunk in a little bit. Okay, so if a, if a, a Ch- so even a Chinese man from China can't own Australian land, right? I, I presume that I'd make a hell of a presumption that there is no effing way that the Australian government is going to let China buy Australian land. Lease it for 99 years? Sure. Own it? Oh, hell no. I can't right. imagine. So, that Australia, I mean, if the Mexicans aren't that stupid, I can't imagine Australian being that stupid. 